Alright, we are live though. Alright, check, check. Alright, hit him up with the intro. Alright, you are here and now with Brandon and Joe. I'm Joe. And I'm Brandon. And this is Here and Now episode... What episode are we on? 14? 15? 14 or 15, I don't know. 15. I'm losing count. Yeah. Uh, Shit. But we do got a special guest today. Yes, sir. Hit him with that intro. Well... <laughs> <laughs> all right we got a fucking film legend in the building motherfucking matt goodman let's go clap it up <laughs> i was a, gonna give you more of an intro bro but I mean, you, you said should, you, 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 you should have let him hit it hit yeah him you said you didn't appliance. want that you didn't want that in I, there i don't like so. intros <laughs> well what's good dude how you doing i'm doing great is that good i don't That's know that right can, can you hear me yeah i can yeah, hear you cool yeah i'm doing great Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so, man. So, what you been up to? Just working. <laughs> work, work, work. <laughs> yeah, just working nonstop. Why is there a delay in these? Is there? Is there? Yeah, crazy, crazy ass delay. Let's see. I'll be honest with you. I really do it without headphones. But you can take them off if you want. You don't have to wear them. Yeah, it, it can get confusing. It does kind of sound like echoey. Like, yeah. It's like... Uh... All right, dude. Well, let's get into... Uh... I wanted to kind of start off like your upbringing and your childhood. Oh Jesus! Yeah, dude, going way Straight back. Into I it. grew up in this neighborhood right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh and, shit! And, yeah, you went to uh, Rittner. Yeah, I actually, you know, on the way here, I drove by my old house. No shit. I went down the street or whatever, and it looks like shit. Does it? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it just How many like, streets away is it? Two. Like that way. Uh, I uh, it's and so I think it's that oh, way okay. towards, towards the route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like I don't know. It's kind of like. It's weird coming back here because the neighborhood just looks like looks like shit over like yeah. that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like some parts. It's, it's weird that like over here it's not so shitty, but like a couple streets over, it's like they they weren't like they're not brick houses and like they are over here, so they're like wooden and they just like they just weren't taken care of. And some of the apart. some of the streets are like narrower too. They're like yeah. way narrow. Like that's what I love about this street is it's wide, pretty wide. You know? you know, and what's really weird is like there was trees all the way up and down the block of the neighborhood, and they tore them all down. Mm. Which oh, I don't no know shit. why. And then like, there, I remember in, in the backyard of my house growing up, there was like a like a like I don't know what they call it, but like those little small like green apples. We used to take them and just fucking launch them at people, and they hurt like hell. <laughs> yeah, and, asshole. Yeah, I was, oh, yeah. I was over here. <laughs> yeah, and we used to hit them with baseball bats and like throw them at people and shit. And no yeah. wonder you're talking shit about the police department. Oh, yeah. Yo, see, I thought <laughs> Man, I was... the police are assholes. No, they're fucking assholes over there. But uh, so meanwhile, was... you're hitting pedestrians and fucking. No, apples. I mean it'd be like friends and shit, you know, but. But, like, they cut down the damn tree. I don't know why. I mean, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Like, you can't throw more apples at people? Yeah, but, like, that, we used to, like, climb that tree and shit. And, like, I don't know. It was fucking cool. And then I was... I'm man, you wanted to pick it. some apples to bring over here to fucking... Oh, yeah, I was ready to fucking yeah, light yeah, you. I, mean, I, I know it. I'm going to get it. them boys some apples. I was going to light you motherfuckers <laughs> up. It's a peace offering. No, but, like, it was just, it was just weird driving through here. Because, like, I don't come over here too often anymore like it especially like this street or whatever and it was just weird like seeing it and just how like i don't know it was just kind of shitty so that's yeah. the house you grew up in though like yeah. born and raised born and much? raised yeah. yeah and you grew up uh skateboarding right oh yeah did you skate like out here oh yeah like i remember at one point in time they made it illegal to skate in st john meaning no like shit. if you had a skateboard that would touch in the ground they would take your board and, and fine you no shit Damn. oh yeah it was what like you, that. Wait, all right not to not to say your age or anything, but when did you grow up? Let's like date what, him. when date. when when did you grow up skateboarding? Like what era was that? I mean, two thousand, like nineties, two thousand. Yeah, you know, um, it's kind of when we started, didn't we? we yeah, started, like, around no, probably like mid two thousand, like two thousand five, two thousand. Yeah, I mean, I graduated in two thousand and three, and I was skateboarding ninety. I probably man since I was like fourteen or fifteen, so. Who was who were some pros back then that you looked up to? Did you oh, have? Oh man, there was a lot. I mean, like of course, like the Chad Muskas and, yeah. and like the whole okay, I can Osiris see I can see style. You know what I'm saying? That. Like the hip hop kids. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like the shorties, shorties guys, um, all that shit. So like they were, you know, they were the kind of influence back then. But then there was like like the Toy Machine. You guys remember Toy Machine? Oh, hell oh yeah. yeah. So like th that company, and then. That was uh, Ed Templeton. Yeah, right? Ed Templeton. Like I remember, like another one that I was like, I liked the uh, consolidated skateboards. You guys remember that? Dude, I don't like, even remember that. So like that was a company. And what it was weird is like, man, we were out in uh, L.A. and we were kicking it with a dude from Cottonmouth Kings, and there was this guy there 
it was it was the weirdest thing. We were at, a, at like this concert, and there was this guy there, and like he was buying us all drinks and shit and everything. And we stayed there like after the show it was like a big Cottonmouth Kings like reunion show thing out there, and like we stayed afterwards or whatever. And I re- I just remember that we were all in this little like hut like bar thing in the middle of like the concert, and I mean there's thousands of people there, right? And I just remember at the end of the night, he walked up to the bartender, and was like, "How much is my tab?" And it, it was like five thousand dollars or some shit, right? And he was just like. Okay, cool. He just paid it out cash, and then he was like, oh, and then here's like, here's another three thousand dollars for tips. Just tip everybody. Dang. Like, and I was like, and I was like, man, who the fuck is this dude? They come to find out, he owned and consolidated skateboards. No, no shit. shit. Yeah. What no the shit. Fuck? I was like, so I was like, wow, what the fuck? That's so wait, wild. where was this at? This was where? That was in L.A. Damn. And what were you doing out there? We were we were out there having a meeting with uh, HRS or whatever. Mm. Now this is when you got into music. Yes. yes. No shit. Was with strategy and all that. No yeah. shit. Yeah. Dude, I want to talk about all that, but I want to talk about skateboarding a little bit more. <laughs> uh, do you remember Mr. Rags? Yeah. Skate shop at Mid Rivers yeah. Mall. Yeah. No shit. They used to have the shittiest fucking decks ever. They'd break so easily. Yeah, there. I, I got my first board there. It was a Tony Hawk Birdhouse board. I remember the graphic and everything. I'm going to get it tattooed somewhere on me, but most people do not remember that. Yeah, they had uh, blank decks. I remember blanks. Like, you remember blanks? It had nothing yeah, on yeah, them. That's yeah, what yeah, we yeah. always buy blanks. And I remember my homie. I mean, this dude was like fucking 15 years older than me. He had a hookup at uh, Sports Authority. Okay. And at the time, Sports Authority was selling blank decks. And this is like, he, he would get them by like the fucking boxes full. And he would just like, here you go, have a deck. Oh, flip them? Oh, yeah. Like, just like we'd pay like 10 bucks for them, you know? Damn. So we just did not give a shit, you know? Just take them and... Yo, those boards suck dick, Yeah, but though. you know what? That's why <laughs> I, I, broke. I literally grew up skating on blank decks. No yeah. shit. I don't think... We, I, I didn't own a Gravity's deck until I was either when I first started I had a Gravity's deck and I didn't really know shit and then like like two years ago I bought a Gravity's deck since yeah. then like I literally just skated oh, just, shitty blank yeah. decks they had, were like, always no so content. cheap they yeah, were they always were like, like the cheapest boards I remember uh, we had a friend that bought uh, Caleb, uh, a yeah, whole yeah. box full of them like online and was like flipping them you know oh he was flipping them but they would snap like yeah. it would piss oh yeah, yeah. the there first day they were like, shit but yeah. the thing is is like if you could do a kickflip on one of those motherfuckers you could do a kickflip on anything oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah. it was like doing a kickflip sure. on a piece of plywood I mean it was just like so yeah they were but that's what I grew up skating on. Uh, what parts did you skate? Was Elm was around, right? Elm, I would say. Tor- I stopped skateboarding like every day. Like I literally skateboarded every fucking day, and I stopped skateboarding every day when I was probably twenty, mm, twenty one. No um, I got more into partying and trying to get the laid. Usual. Than, 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 Honestly, than, that, than, that was my thing too. Yeah. Like I, I feel like I stopped around twenty. I was working, yeah. partying, you know, and. Yeah. Responsibilities come yeah. into play. Like I was worried about getting hurt. I was I well, stopped trying to do handrails and gaps and was like, "Cool, I'm gonna skate this box." You know, yeah. that's one of the things that was like my decline in skateboarding was me breaking my leg. Oh yeah, and, and, and then yeah, yeah, and but, and, and I slowly like got back into it, but it was just never the same after. Obviously, like it, I still have PTSD from breaking my leg. Yeah, I mean, like, I did. I tore the ligaments of my. I, I say when I was like 18, I tore all the ligaments of my right ankle, <laughs> and like before that, I I didn't give a Fuck. Yeah, but same. after that happened, I was like, man, I just oh. gotta like, dude, just thinking out. about it right now, it's like cringy. Like, well, I'm the, like, the shitty thing about you is it was 16 when it happened. Yeah, yeah. so like the fall of your skateboarding was so young, it Ooh. just. Dude, it is so. It is literally <laughs> traumatic, bro. Foot. Like, I, if I even think about it a little bit, I get. How did you? How'd you do it? it? I was. Uh, so we. It was. Have you ever heard of Yap? Youth Activity Park in uh, O'Fallon. It's kind of in Dardine Prairie. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I don't know. It was probably. It wasn't around when he was skating, I guess, but. Uh, so we snuck in, like we got in there without paying because we weren't going to Was skate. it a skate park? Yeah, it was yeah. a skate park that you paid. It was, it was only like $3 or something to get in, but we didn't have our board or anything. We were just not supposed to be skating. So I borrowed some kid's board. It was a flat fucking board, like had no concave. Yeah. It was like just beat the shit up. And I used some other kid's helmet and I was nollie flipping a hip, like, you know, a hip like this to yeah. that. And uh, so with his board being so flat, when I landed, my foot slipped off and I, and then like this foot ended up on the, or this, my knee here ended up on the flat part of the ground and my foot was still on the slope and all my weight came right down in the Damn. middle of my leg. Yeah, it was, it was fucked. It, half, it was dude. fucked. Yeah. I, I had a friend of mine who, he was good and he was crazy. Like he was more crazy than he was good. Like he didn't give a fuck. He would like yeah. try anything. Yeah, we had a friend like that. And then he broke his ankle. And he had like he had like six bolts in his ankle and shit, and he was out for like a year. You know what I mean? And then when he came back, 
for somehow or another, like all he thought about was skateboarding the whole time, and like he just figured out every single trick. Like he could land every trick. Just he was better when he yeah, because he just like. I don't know. He just like thought everything out, like how to no do shit. everything. You yeah. know, he put more thought into it for the first oh, time in his life, just like, going for like it. just going for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And he got really fucking good, but he was still crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. he had like no pain tolerance whatsoever. Like he just like he didn't give like it was just. Dude, it, it amazes matter. it amazes me when I see people come back to skateboarding like after a significant injury and and they're still like pros. You know, like they're still killing it, going throwing themselves down big shit. I'm like. Man, you guys are crazy. Dude, you I remember this balls. video of um, Arto Sari. I don't know if you guys mm-hmm. remember him. Yeah. He tried to feeble El Toro. Oh, yeah. He got caught up. Like, was it El Toro? Ha- it was El Toro. And he, hit, and he threw and up he, and he yeah, twisted he, his whole body yep, up. Yeah, I remember that. You know what? The crazy all the way down the, to the, the bottom. The craziest thing now is like I follow – everything I follow on Instagram is basically skateboarders. Yeah, so, yeah. like, I watch same, that shit same. and I'm like – yeah, I had no chance. Dude, <laughs> dude, they're too fucking good now. They're so good. It's some skate three so, shit. Dude, it's so it, good. they make it like, it's impossible to become pro yeah. now. Like, it, everybody it, is so good. Like, and then, like, the guy that I follow the most is N- N- Niger Houston yeah. or whatever. And, like, you watch him skate, and you're just like... It makes me mad, dude. Because oh, he makes it look too easy. Did you watch his video part he did? Yeah. That new video part? Yeah. Holy shit, dude! Just his Instagram, just his shit that he films on his story is just. Yeah, and then, but then you're like, then you're like, you you watch the like the video part, you're like, okay, he probably tried that fifteen thousand times and finally landed it, cool. But then you watch his like Instagram stories, you're like, no, this dude is so he's consistent. knocking shit yeah. out first. He's try. just yeah. like first yeah. or second try. Yeah. yeah. You know, and Crazy. you're like, holy shit. Like, he has three sixty flips down to the point that like that they don't even seem real. No. Yeah, I know. It's just like. And lands it Perfect. Like he makes it, Dude it's almost like Hard to watch him Because he makes it look Too easy I'm yeah. like it's not that easy no. Like why It's, it's like when we're Talking about snowboarding it so It's like that <laughs> Yeah Yeah So yeah Well it's Kids these days Like um I remember this kid I forget his name I, Ryan Fargo Shouts out to him But I remember seeing His first kickflip And now this dude Is doing like Nolly flip Crook Nolly flip out Crazy shit there, There's a new park Over there in Maplewood Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and it's a cool little park, man. I haven't like, skated it, but it's cool. But there's this kid that I started following on Instagram, man. He's fucking really good. He's probably like 15 or 16 years old, and he is solid. I, mean, I think I know he, what you're talking He skates that is park it? every day, and he just posts his footage like on his Instagram, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's fucking killing it, man. Like, he's the really The kids good. I grew up skating with, like yeah. like Andrew Meyer, Shred. like all the, the, yeah. the boys, fucking killing it still. Yeah. And they're yeah. 28, 29, still yeah. doing the same so, shit. I can't, it's fucking tight. I can't do it. As a matter of fact, I went... I, for, I was skating I, like two years ago I got back into it for a summer and started skating like nonstop. me and my, my boy Jason and uh, like I went up to Elm not or uh, Elm Park but in Webster I don't know if you know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about it's like an old skating ring and they got ramps in there oh and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and I was just like up there fucking around by myself one day and I slammed so hard and, I, and I'll show you what I did here on my hand I can move my hand like this but on this hand nothing because no I tore a ligament in my fucking hand Damn. and I haven't skated since. No shit. My hand swelled up like that. I had to go good I had to go to a fucking doctor. I had to get an x ray and like I was gonna have to get hand surgery like surgery on my hand to fucking so I could move my finger and shit and I was like, Man, fuck this. Yeah. It's, it's not, not worth, worth it. it. Not yeah, worth no. it to me. It's yeah, dude, falling me. now is so much different than it was back in the day. Like I, I it's like and even skating flat ground, I yeah. get worn the fuck out. I, I wish I just had like a box. Yeah, that's all I want. That's all I want. Skate. I want that's a, a box. Ma- manual pad. A little manual yeah, pad. Yeah. Even a rail, little yeah. rail, but I am not jumping down shit. You will not catch me doing Fuck no. No, no. stairs, no handrails, no, no. none of that. Like, no gaps. I'm good. Bro, I hit a rock, though, you know, like last time I skated and it fucking hurt my elbow yeah. so damn bad. It's just like. I don't know. Maybe as you get older, your pain tolerance is just get. Yeah, because you're just like, this ain't yeah. worth it. Yeah. <laughs> like, even, for what? even getting tattooed, yeah, I'm like, fuck, why am I yeah, putting myself through this shit? Of. I haven't got tatted in a while. Exactly. I think yeah. that was my last Maybe one for the right same, there. I'm like, yeah. same reason. Like, I got a chest piece that I want to get, but I know that's going to... It's a bitch. It's a bitch. I don't know. You got your stomach done? No, he I does. do. I got my he stomach does. and my side. I got my stomach and my side, but I was 18 when I got it. My pain tolerance was like... Through the well, room. I, my first tattoo when I was like 20, I got my side, my whole side done, and then my, I did my stomach probably when I was like 30. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Like, I almost didn't finish it. I was almost it just burns. tapped out on that motherfucker. Oh, dude, that shit yeah. sucked. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing about tattoo is, they can be tattooing up here, and all of a sudden it's it, shot. Yeah, it hurts, it hurts your lower yeah. in your knee or yeah. some shit. You're like, yeah, it oh, doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, yeah, it's awful. It's fucking awful, man. But the, but the thing about like growing up skateboarding, I've noticed is um, a lot of people take different paths around the age of 20 like you yeah. said and they like i know a lot of skaters that make music 
and get getting into filming like you yeah. and getting into making beats. I mean, that's where that's where I think film came from for me is from skateboarding. Yeah, yeah. I got I got to contribute agree, that to hundred, even music I because I had friends who were into music and they were like they got me into music. You know, what I, mean? I, I I didn't even listen to rap music. Yeah, until I got into skateboarding. No that, shit. That's a lot of like how we would find new songs, escape videos. For sure, that's yeah. how I became a fan of ninety percent of the music that I like today is through skateboarding videos. Yeah, because I I know for me is like without skateboarding, I I would not be who I am today. For sure. Same yeah. with you. Same with you. I mean, who knows? I mean, because the the people that I met in that from that realm and that culture is like really what shaped me to this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same. Imagine yeah. if you grew up playing football or some shit, no, you mean, wouldn't uh, be the film legend. You no, know, I wouldn't. You'd there be no a way. coach or some shit. I, 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 I probably would have kept Coach Matt. Coach Matt. Because I came from, it was weird. It's like, He's I got played. got beer belly. <laughs> <laughs> I had 12 kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, had, I, I came from hockey. I mean, I played hockey my entire, from, okay, from me, the age yeah, of like three until I was like 18, you know? And, and what's weird is like in the last year, I've been playing hockey a lot more. Yeah. And, I've and, seen and, you posting and, it and up I've on been I've been enjoying it and. It's less risky. I don't want to go play games. I don't want to go play in a tournament and play against fucking other people. I don't want to do that. I want to go shoot around, fuck around. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing really serious. And I've had a lot of fun doing that lately. I'm pretty sure you told me that you go hard though. Like you check people and oh, I will. You throw throw sticks. And I will. Shit. <laughs> I will. That's my biggest problem. I, I don't want to fucking end up in jail for <laughs> fucking hitting someone with a stick Wait, or some shit. That's where he's taking out all of his anger. Yeah, I'm taking out all my anger on somebody. You know, like. No, but it's, seriously, I, I just don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be in a competition. I just want to yeah, have fun and yeah. chill and yeah. just relax, you know. And I, I've been finding that a lot more with hockey here recently. But like, of course, when I have time, which is never. But skateboarding, it's just like it's it's too painful and too much of a risk, you know. Yeah. What I mean, like, oh, dude, just landing primo is a big risk. Yeah, you know, doing a kickflip and landing fucking primo and busting your ass. I, I eat a lot of shit flat ground. Yeah, I mean, know? listen, it, the last time I skated, I, I fucked up my hand, and I was just like, man, it's like, and, I, and, I, and you know, I hold a camera every day, and like I feel it in this fucking hand because of yeah. doing that, you know? And I think there's a lot of shit that's like with my body, like my back and my knees and my ankles and shit, I can contribute all those problems to skateboarding. Yeah. All of them. Yeah, I, I, I my <laughs> knees, especially yeah. my knees, yeah. bro. Like, I'm beginning to like working out now. And every time I squat, my right knee gives out. Yeah. And I know it's from jumping off and fucking who knows, all that who shit. Who knows what, yeah. You know? Well, that's a good transition. So you said uh, skateboarding got you into music, which eventually led to FTI. Yep. Let's talk about FTI. Like, What was your role in FTI, and how did that come about? Um, so I met Dustin, who was strategy. I met him, obviously, weird enough, through skateboarding. And oh, um, at the time, he had a band. Um and he was a DJ for the band. And then he was like, well, I want to rap, this and that. He started writing songs. And he introduced me to a friend, a, a mutual friend now with Danny Ragsdale who made beats. Mm. And prior to all that, I I was doing music with a guy. His name was Manifest. He was a, he was a rapper that I grew up with, went to high school with, skateboarded with. And, and I kind of grew up with him. He was kind of a rapper, and I was playing DJ, producing role, and I was recording and all that stuff and I kind of was like when I met Dustin I was like hey man like you know I have a whole studio like we can uh, we could really do this you know I make beats and record and all that and then you know Danny at the time he, he made beats and like we just started fucking around and we, we kind of made a group of called uh, AI artificial intelligence so it was Dustin rapping I was DJing and Danny was making the beats and being a hype man and I was mm. making beats too and I was recording everything and producing it and then somewhere along the line of about a year or two into that, Dustin came up with the, uh, the, the idea of FTI Army. It was all 100% him. Which, which stands for? Fuck the industry. Fuck the industry. And he came up with the whole idea, and we kind of just ran with it, you know, and we kind of built off that brand, and we had a pretty good run with it. Um, we toured. We did a lot of cool shit, and I was producing and recording and DJing the whole time for, for that. And then we brought in a couple other groups, Cold Case. We eventually brought in Nothing Nice. And then the last artist that I really was fucking with hard was Peasy. Mm. Um, some things happened in the whole process of, of all that, like what caused it to kind of collapse upon itself. Um, we had a really good run, and we, we did it for, I don't know, 10 years or so. I think, the late, I think FTI started in 2005, and we were doing music together 
four or five years before that, I, w- I would say. No shit. And it was kind of weird because, like, at, at one point in time, I got sick. Every, I mean, you guys yeah. know that. I got really sick. And I felt like – and I had a, I did a podcast with Dustin not too long ago, and, and we kind of talked about this. But I feel like at some point when I got sick, everything kind of started collapsing in because I wasn't able to – I wasn't able to be that backbone to it all. I wasn't able, I was kind of the guy that was kind of keeping everything running. I was doing a lot of shit and, you know, as far as recording and producing and show wise and all that. And I felt like whenever I kind of stepped back because of my illness, everything kind of just fell upon itself. Mm. And I know Dustin the whole time, he was kind of like really questioning what he was doing with his life and, and what he wanted to do. And he wanted to be a tattoo artist and he just, you know, rapping was cool, but it was like, it wasn't really going anywhere. Like we were the money that we were making out of it was basically going back into itself mm-hmm. as far as like paying for merch, paying mm-hmm. for us going tour, and paying for all that shit. And we all had day jobs still, and it, it got hard, you know. And it, I think when when I got sick, we started kind of internally beefing a little bit. I would say like we're all friends still to this day, but like just weird weird situations happen with money, and not that anybody accuse anybody of stealing money or anything, but like. There was never no money to be made from it, so like we're all like, "Fuck!" Like, what do we? Do? We start. Que- we're getting older. We're questioning what we're doing with our lives, and I, I think Dustin was the first one to say, "You know what? Fuck this! I'm stepping out." Mm-hmm. And he stepped out, and then I kept FTI Army going for for another five or six years with Cold Case, Nut Nice, and then PZ. Towards the end, I really started fucking with him, and I think that it kind of all happened for, to all of us where we're kind of like, you know, what are we doing? We're right. all kind of questioning why we're doing this and and nothing really coming from it you know we, we had a fan base and but it was just nothing nothing big was coming we, we weren't going to feed our families off this right you know and um so we all kind of started stepping back and, and i still feel like i was one of the last ones to kind of step back off of it you know me and peasy towards the end we were just like going hard um peasy's a dope artist i just don't think he knows how to market himself at all and i and he'll admit that I don't even think he had a Facebook until the end of what we were doing, you know? So, and I, and I couldn't take it all on because I owned a bunch of other businesses and I just, I couldn't do it anymore. And that's how kind of I found film. And, and, and the weird thing about film, I'd always tell people, they're like, how'd you get into that? Well, I did it from skateboarding, but I think that really what happened with film is at, at a point in time, FTI Army needed music videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there was nobody in town to do them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, fuck it. I could take on this role. And I went out and bought a camera. And that's basically how it started. Yeah, so you so you picked that camera up from, from the skateboarding days. Like, you were the one that was, like, kind of filming back in the yeah, skate days I, and stuff. Yeah, and I remember me and my, my homie Chris, we had, like, a VHS that we shared upon, amongst each other. We had two VCRs, and that's how yeah. we were editing shit. And, you know, and we, we put skateboarding tapes together. As a matter of fact, I just bought a, a little converter. I'm going to put these tapes online. I'm, try, oh, I'm trying yeah. to get it all together. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's how I kind of started editing is through that. And... You know, obviously, technology has changed a whole fucking lot. The whole game has yeah, changed. Yeah. So you when know? you started filming, uh, when you started filming like the music videos and stuff like that, you were still producing and all that. Oh yeah, right? and that like, was like your main thing. Yeah. And no. then, um, what made you fall? Did you fall in love with the filming, or did you just see a outlet like you're like, oh, there's something to this filming more so than like the producing and all that? You know, it, it was weird because like I was still producing up until about two years ago. Yeah, I remember recording a yeah. song at your house, and it's I did it from the for so long. I mean, at one point in time, I owned a recording studio. I was in there twelve hours a day, seven days a fucking week, and I think I just got burnt out on it. Mm. I think if you ask me five years from now, I'll probably start producing again. Mm. I just think that there's no money in it, and, and it's not all about the money. But like right now, my time yeah. is mm. worth so much money right, because right. I could. You know, I make a so, so much money an hour. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like my time. So me to sit there and make beats for three, four hours, well, I could have made, a, you know, 500,000 bucks. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, I know it's shitty to say it like that, but it's like I'm older now. Like, I got I got bills and I have fucking, you know, I don't have any kids. Yeah. Thank God. But, that you know of. Yeah, but, but, you know, <laughs> but, you know, like, <laughs> but it's like I have responsibilities now financially with businesses and employees and people I pay and put money in their pockets that yeah. I can't just go fuck around for yeah. for hours at a time, you know? And it's now it's, w- it sucks, but it's the truth. What made it like, 
So you were filming for FTI. Yeah. But what did people ask you for yeah, music yeah. videos from that? It's weird because I started doing music videos for free for people. And I don't want to say how many videos I actually did for free because I did a whole shitload of them for free. And that's how, and that's the same thing with like music. Like I was always like producing and shit. And whenever I got the recording, when I, when I opened up my recording studio, I had a couple of business partners. When I opened that up and I was like, I was, this is what I was doing every single day. Yeah, I yeah. got really good at it. Yeah. You know? And I think the same thing with filming, like, I, I knew that mentality. Like if you put enough time and effort towards something, You'll like you're skateboarding, yeah. you know, like you, practice doing a kickflip every day yeah. you're gonna get damn good at it and the same thing with filming so I just started offering to do it for free for people I found artists that I liked and I was like let's do a music video let's do a music video and then I started charging 50 bucks 100 bucks 200 bucks 300 bucks 400 bucks 500 bucks 600 kept going 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 yeah. going going and then it got to the point now where it's like I have corporate companies that are calling me that I'm flying out of state to go do shit for yeah. you know and it just it's kind of a crazy like if you would have asked me five years ago, even, would you be making a living from filming? I would have been like, fuck no. I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't have money. In this. You know, I'm doing it, you know, yeah. and, and it's cool. And I'm, that, I'm grateful for it. That's something I wanted to actually ask you about <laughs> is, how, so how did you start to determine your worth? Like, how did you start increasing the price? Was it allocating your time? Like, you're like. Yeah, I mean, even right now, I'm, I'm still, like, having this inner struggle of, like, what is my worth? Because my time is worth so much, but. It's weird because like, like, like this weird thing that I've been going battling with is like, there's like a lot of artists that I really fuck with and I really like their music, and I, I would love to just be involved in a project, and whether it's free or for a little bit of money, but it's like, sometimes I can't do it because I, I got other obligations yeah. that are paying me, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's like, and I feel like such a shitty person, like, because I. When people ask me like, well, how does it cost? How much does it cost for a music video? I'm like, well, it just depends. And it's like, yeah, I'm more expensive probably than every person in St. Louis. Yeah. But you also got the the equipment, the experience, <sighs> yeah. the camera. Yeah, the but it, but, it, but I don't want to be that. I wish I I wish I was like I won the lottery and I can just do shit yeah. for free. Because yeah, then yeah. I just pick out artists that I fucking enjoy being around yeah. and doing music and doing yeah. shit with them. You yeah. know, like I w did when I was younger, but yeah. now it's turned into a job. Yeah, and yeah. It, is, it is a it's a fucking job. It's oh, a yeah. it's a thirteen hour day seven day a week job and I know some people will look at it like they'll think that I'm a shitty person because I'm like hey it's a fucking job you know like you go to fucking work at a warehouse I work holding the camera they're like oh well, that's the greatest thing in the world yeah it's cool like don't get me wrong like don't get me fucked up it's cool mm -hmm. but it's still a job yeah right you still got to get out of bed and you got to do it even though you don't want to do, do it see yeah. I hear a lot of creators talk talk like that <laughs> like at, like when it becomes a job is it, it kind of takes away from like the passion behind it you know like it, yeah. because it is something like okay I have to do this now to pay these bills and and uh, so how do you keep the passion part alive like do, do you still have fun with it is it still like a thing that or is that it you working? love doing or is it more does it feel more like a 9 to 5 at this point like has the business part taken over <laughs> I've been doing a lot more corporate gigs lately because it pays more money than music videos. And I feel like that's a job. Mm. It's doing shit that I don't want to do. I don't, I have no interest in it at all. Like I don't want to sit down and listen to you talk about your organization. I don't give a shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I care, you know, cause these guys are raising money for people and whatnot, but it's like, I don't care to be there because it's not, it's what's paying me. It's a job, you yeah. know? It's not like I'm being creative like I am with a music video. I'd much rather be doing music videos but at the end of the day, it's not you, where the money you is. Gotta, you gotta pay for this yeah. stuff, you yeah. know? Like, people don't understand that, like, I could be running around with a $3,000 DSLR, it's paid for, but I, I pay $2,000 a month for the camera that I have. Yeah. And it's just like, does it make me, be does it make me a better videographer, a better filmmaker, because I have a nicer camera? No. But the quality's different. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and I, there's, there's some there's some guys in this town that I look at their work and I'm like fuck man these guys are good, like if they if they they could really figure this out and figure out how to make money from it they could really make a lot of money, and it, it's kind of a weird it's kind of scary in a way it's like because you're looking at the people that could replace you mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and like I don't I don't want to be replaced in the music video world because I like doing music videos you know but at the end of the day, it's like you got to choose. 
yeah. where you want to be. See, you're kind of in a tough spot. It's weird, man, because like I, I don't ever want to. I don't ever want to charge people for anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when people are like, "Oh, you're too much money," I'm like, "I get it, man." Like, yeah. I, I, but you gotta understand if you're not willing to pay it, somebody else is. Yeah. And I and I gotta choose, you know. Yeah. And it's like, I know it sounds shitty. To me, it sounds it sounds shitty coming out of my mouth that like I'm choosing this, but I'm but I'm like I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. No. no, it makes sense to me, dude. Like, uh, even when somebody hits me up about like VSA clothing, and I'm like, they ask me how much it is, and I tell them, and I'm like, fuck, man, I wish I could just give it to you for free, yeah, but I, mean, I have to, you know. You gotta have that business is. mentality, yeah. or else you're not gonna do shit. Yeah. With, with your life, you yeah, know. I mean, I, I, listen, I would love to give shit away for free and but I just don't want to live in a fucking cardboard box. Yeah, right. it, it's like the same thing. Like everybody's like, I've had so many people like, why don't you go to LA? And like my thing about going to LA is like, man, I'm fucking I'm 36 years old. I have a custom of living like how I live my life for the last 20 years. You know what I mean? And I can't go sleep on somebody's couch and struggle. Right. Like I will go fucking crazy. I'm like, that is not for me. You know, it's just not for me. I have a custom of like having a car and, Doing what I want to do, and if I want to go out to eat, I can go out to eat. You know, like I don't want to go I'm the, struggle. I'm the same way. I'm I don't want to struggle. Because I, I constantly think about like, man, what if I just packed up and moved somewhere else and kind of had a fresh start and just went after it like that? But you know, I'm 29 now, and my my priorities have changed. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely cannot sleep on. I I don't. I have trouble spending a night at people's houses. Yeah. Because I just like my own shit. Yeah. I have just certain. I don't want roommates. Yeah. Like, Fuck a roommate. And I have roommates right now, yeah. and it sucks. Fuck a roommate. Sorry. You know what I mean, I'd rather, <laughs> I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather struggle when it comes to money than have a roommate. I just don't want them. I yeah. don't want. Mm-hmm. I don't want str- to. I don't want to struggle. Peace you know? of mind is yeah. important. Yeah, it, it's very important. And it's, you know, like I said, man, it's just like a weird. I'm in a weird state right now with this because, like, my time is worth so many dollars, and I don't really know where to what what the what the price tag is on that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's weird. Yeah, it's, it's hard to it's hard to de- to determine what it is and um now, how do you feel like that's do you feel like you're at a place where you're comfortable and do you like being comfortable or do you think you thrive like being uncomfortable? I definitely thrive on being uncomfortable. Um where I'm at here in life right now. Um so like I guess it would be a couple of different things. Are you talking mentally, financially? Or just yeah, well, like, like you said, you don't want to you don't want to sleep on anybody's couch. Yeah, or, I mean, like when it comes to money, like I'm I'm cool, you know. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not balling, but I'm fuck. I got a house, got a car, you know. I'm, I'm good, you know. I, I get to travel for work, and you know, I I do like if if I want to go out to eat tomorrow, I ain't got to worry about going to spend fifty bucks. You know yeah. what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, am I comfortable? Like, do, am I at where, am I where I want to be at right now? No. Fuck no. When I th- when I was 25, I was like, shit, I should be a millionaire by now, yeah. and I'm not. You know, yeah. and I'm fucking Same. nowhere close. Yeah. <laughs> like nowhere close. Yeah. Well, you're 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 hustling though. <laughs> like, you're yeah. you're at it like what seven days a week? Yeah. Do you take a day off? No. No. <laughs> ask me ask me when I've been on vacation the last time. When? <laughs> when I was probably like 14, 15. Damn. See, like, see, your vacations are your trips. Yeah, it's work. It's well, work. I, I made a post on on Instagram the other day, and I posted a bunch of shit from LA, and it was like a couple of days before they shut everything down from the pandemic, and um, we were out there, and it's like I have so many like photos on my phone of like shit that I've done that I can't post. It's crazy. So when you're out in those like LA trips, you don't feel like that's any type of vacation. I mean, it is, but you're working. Yeah. Like you're there to work. You're, on, you're not there to like just chill for yeah, four or five th- days. You're there on somebody else's dime. Yeah. So you have to kind of answer to them almost. Yeah. yeah, but bro, you strike me as a person that thrives off of work. Like that's probably oh, where yeah, you're the yeah. happiest. Like yes, if I, you were to take a vacation or take a couple months off, you would probably get depressed. You know? I don't do good being bored. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, the same like, way. I get into my inner thoughts and mm-hmm. I start fucking questioning my whole life. Like I like working. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as, as, as long as I've that's known a blessing you, that's how right it's there. always been. That's like, a that's, blessing. And, and I've always been like that. Even if yeah. you're like, I was working in a warehouse. I'd rather be working in a warehouse, not, as much as I might bitch when I'm there, I'd rather be doing that than sitting at home doing nothing and watching TV bored. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm a lot like that too. My girl actually <coughs> was just saying that. She was like, Joe, you never just take time to just sit and just 
for be what? here. You know, I'm like, what? my mind is like, we'll be sitting in bed together and I'll just be like thinking about like photos I got to edit and like shit I got to do. And I'll be like kicking it with her for like five minutes. I'm like, All right, I got to go edit these photos. She's like, just chill for a little, you know, Yeah. Down- which, which, which brings up a good point is like, how do you balance work life? Yeah, that's like, what I'm about to ask. <laughs> well, do, it's do the reason why I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have yeah. kids. I don't, you know, like I don't really talk too much of my family. Um, I have friends, but it's like, I feel like my friends are at this point are just like, don't even bother hitting me up because right. they know my ass yeah. is working. You know, yeah. like it's I, when they do hit me up, I'm like, oh, I got to shoot. They're like, all right. You're like, they, like I, I knew that what I even ask, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's hard, man. Yeah. Like, I think, I think in life you got to choose. Do you want, do you want to be rich and successful? Do you want to be rich and famous? Do you want to be with a family and, and have that comfort? Choose your path. Right. Because you can't have them all. If the second that you you decide that you want to be rich and famous and have a family and and, and, and money and all this, you can't have it all. It's yeah. just you, you got to sacrifice choose. something. You got yeah. life is about making sacrifices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Big there's time. people out here that just don't understand that. See, the one thing about me and Joe is like when we hang out with friends, it it's podcast. Yeah. It's uh, doing something productive, going to the gym. It's it's hardly ever going out to the club. Like me yeah. and him do not go out to bars yeah. and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. All of our friends are all productive minded like us. Well, and that's a, that's another thing that like here in the last couple of years that I've really been trying to focus on is keeping the right people around me. Mm-hmm. It's keeping, everything. Mm. It's important. And and getting rid of the 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 people that just want to sit at home and be Hold fucking losers and complain about life and complain about being broke because all that complaining and energy you're putting towards that could make you successful. Mm-hmm. You know, you just got to get off your ass and go get it. Um, I think that we've all had a bad hand handed to us in one way or another, somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. We can all tell stories of shitty childhood growing up or whatever. At the end of the day, if you want it, go fucking make it happen because no one's going to do it for you. 100%. And I don't no, feel 100%. sorry for anybody who wants to sit around a bitch and complain that it's not happening for them. Because yeah. guess what? I didn't get to where I was fucking sitting on my ass. Yeah. And you guys didn't get where you are sitting on your ass. Right. Now, how? speaking of that, like, how did you... How did you become the biggest filmer in St. Louis? I don't know if I'm the biggest filmer in St. Louis. I see it, though. I see, like, like dude, artists that I admire yeah. that weren't working with you five years ago that are now you're their main guy. Yeah, I mean, but there, I don't want to shit on anybody in St. Louis because I think that the, the, the difference is, like, there's some guys out there, you know, uh, I'll, I'll name them here, like Vic Mont. Yep. You know what I mean? Everybody yep. knows who Vic, Vic is. Uh, Nico Nell. Yep. He's another mm-hmm. guy. Um, Boomin is another one of my homies. Um, Tory Productions. So those those guys right there, they're fucking running St. Louis. And I think what they're, I think there's a difference between me and them. And the difference is like their content, which is, I'm I'm 100 percent people putting out con- like content, content, like content is king. If you're if you're any type of artist, mm-hmm. the more shit you can put out, the better off you are. I think what I'm different with them is, is I'm gonna put out a product that's gonna make you look top tier um the problem with that me saying that is like i work with artists sometimes that have their own vision and it's different from my vision and i think it takes away from putting it to where it needs to be um but i'm not always right you know fuck there's some i've done a couple music videos i mean i've done a lot of music videos where the artist had the vision and i'm just there to paint it to make it make it come to life and none of it was my idea and it turned out dope i think that content is content i think that those guys i named are more than capable of being on my level. Mm. I think that they are on my level. Yeah. Because without a doubt they're doing they're putting out more content than me, you know. Um they all have more followers than me. They all have bigger Instagrams, bigger YouTubes, you know. So I look at those guys as like I check out all their shit every time they put shit out, you know what I mean? And I think that they're fucking killing it. Yeah. I think that the only up that I might have on them is I'm dealing with the corporate side of things where I'm making a little more money to be able to buy better equipment. Right. Outside of that, they got the fucking talent. I think that, I think the one thing, and, and this ain't to shit on them by any means, I think if they just step back and focus more on one project at a time instead of trying to do 10 of them in a day, yeah. that they would put out better content. But I think that that's the, that's the hustle they're in is putting out as much content as they can, and they're doing a fucking good job at it. Well, how did you kind of rise up like that? Just by word of mouth, by people seeing yeah, your I mean, work? Yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely just from doing shit for free at first and then just continue to learn. 
And I think that the reason why I was able to like kind of jump ahead of everybody is because of the equipment that I bought. But I was able to do that because I, I had an in with the corporate world, mm. you know, and that was able to put me 10 steps ahead as far as like where money you, to be able where to you purchase, can buy the, purchase the, the shit. The nice you know? cameras. And That's actually a question I wanted to ask you. So you are like an epitome of investing in your craft, you know, like you yes. said, you got the camera, you got the, the red and all that. At what point does investing in your craft, like when, when is it the return not worth the investment? I'm a, I'm a uh, shining example of that okay, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could do everything that I'm doing right now with a $3,000 DSLR. Yeah. Probably easier and faster because this is what I always say. Like the bigger the camera, the harder it is to move around, the more expensive mm-hmm. it is to move around. You know, you can't just, you can't just put it on a, on some type of, you know, stabilizer and just call it a day and then run around with it all day. Like you'll kill yourself holding that thing all day. Yeah. And I think that, I think the creativity, it hinders the creativity. It really does because it's like now I got to like think about how, how, how I'm going to move this camera and how I'm going to do this and how and do that. And unlike before, it's just like I didn't have to so much think about the gear as much as the thought of the project, you know. Mm. So, but I think that it, that this comes down to, I don't know, I, it, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to explain. I just think that it hinders creativity. How I look at it is like if you buy a $1,000 DSLR or whatever, $3,000 DSLR, that camera could be good and you could do what you're doing but yep. it it has its cap it has its limitations it, but it but it does but it doesn't because cameras are so good now yeah that it doesn't matter yeah but yeah. it's not it's not it doesn't matter cuz i have seen some people do dope shit with iPhones you know <laughs> oh, like yeah. i've seen people do shit like that but at the same time it's like your skills are going to exceed that camera eventually you know what i'm saying like 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 you buying that red is a good investment because you know your skills are going to catch up to that level of like high quality, quality. so now you got yeah. the skills and the quality behind it but i mean there's guys that i follow on youtube that that are rocking you know little sony dslrs and they're mm-hmm. blowing my content out of the water i mean yeah. they're killing it so i just don't believe that like the equipment matters yeah it's about this your yeah. creativity you know and 100%. using what you got yeah. And we're the epitome of that. I mean, we're. <coughs> I mean, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, what's up with this, bro? No, I'm just but I mean, uh, but, but for real though, like, I mean, it's just like, the, look at this. like, there's people who can take pictures with this. Yeah. Let me would, see that. I'm actually taking. They a would blow your DSLR out the water just because they're talented. You know right. what I mean? And it's it's more about the talent than it is the equipment. Oh, <laughs> I'm probably the dumbest. <laughs> yeah, I'm blinking in there. Uh, but yeah, so. I don't know, man. Like, I think there's a lot of talent in here in St. Louis. I think that it's just not capitalized. Mm-hmm. And I think that everybody shits on each other too, which is this crap. That's with crabs the music. In the that's yeah. everything. Well, dude, here, I hear that term a lot when people describe St. Louis crabs in a bucket. Do you really believe that's what St. Louis is, or do you feel like that is everywhere? Do you think LA is like that? You think everywhere is like that? I think it's everywhere, but I think in other here's here's the difference. What I really think about with St. Louis is is, is a money thing. Because an opportunity deal. Because there's not as many opportunities here, and there's not as much money here. So if you go out to LA, there's so many fucking opportunities. There's so much money yeah. being yeah. passed around that everybody can get a piece of the pie. But here, it's like everybody's fighting for that same piece of pie. Yeah, and I've always told him this too: is like we have a Midwest mentality out here where vlogging isn't normal, and and vlogging can can increase your business. And whereas like in LA, everybody's vlogging yeah. so it's normal so it's normal to go out in public holding a camera whereas out here it's, weird. it's limited limiting because people look at you weird and people you get are like, criticized a lot more yeah so i feel like out here people are more like closed-minded than they are out there yeah i think people they they, they see somebody here being successful and they just want to shit on them. yeah yeah because they, they feel like well that was my opportunity i deserve that yeah. i i deserve to be successful fuck yeah. him you know yeah and the scarcity mindset. Yeah, and I yeah. think like even like with with those guys I named in the camera in the camera world here in St. Louis in the music video world, I think that all those guys have a mutual respect for each other. Yeah. From whatever what I've gathered from everybody, you know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm sure there's some shit talking going on behind the scenes, but I think a lot of us really, because I'm not even really that close with those guys. You know, I, I'm cool with Boomin. I'm, I'm yeah. probably cooler with him than all of them. Um, but I think that. I think in that in, in like the rap music video world here in St. Louis, there's a few guys that kind of have control of everything, and I kind of wish that we could all get together and make a monopoly of it, mm. turn mm. it into a real fucking business where yeah. we're really making money. 
but I think that some some people might look at it as like I'm good, you know, I'm making money, yeah. I'm happy, so fine. But I think that I think that I think if we here's the thing, like I've always been like this with artists. <clears throat> I feel like that we could even like in the rap world here, like the rappers, that we could all band together and fucking make people notice us. Mm. But instead, we're too busy. I deserve this. I deserve that. You know? I mean, we, we could be put... Like, I look at... Uh, what's uh, Kendrick's little label? TD. Yeah. I think that, like, if you look at their situation, that's a model that St. Louis could base yeah. off of. And that's a model that... Look at us. Yeah. You don't have a choice but to look at us. I yes. see uh, T Double trying, you know, <clears throat> yeah. starting the AMG thing. And yeah. I think that's dope. And you know, I fuck with T Dub. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's one of my oh, favorite yeah, artists. Yeah, yeah, he's one of my favorite mm-hmm. artists yeah. in this city. And he's got a lot of talent over there. And it's fucking dope that he's using this platform to bring up other artists. Yeah. And really, at the end of the day, man, it's only going to help him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Because I, I remember a few years back, there was a Delmar <laughs> Records. Too, which is like Tefpo. Yeah, I think uh, that fell apart quick. Tech Supreme and all them, but to me, I was that was like the TDE shit that you were talking about. Yeah. I was just like, they were all right. They're setting it up for something big. Yeah, and I, I mean, th- even like with FTI Army, like that was our exactly. that was yeah, our goal to same, like same. put other artists on. Same. Like at one point in time, we were talking about like every artist in St. Louis, let's put them on, let's put them onto this, and let's just build a fucking like monopoly. And like that was really our goal. Um, I think it didn't happen. Because of our internal struggles and, and, and the fact that, like, we weren't, we didn't know what the next step was. Because, mm. like, when we were coming up, the difference was, is, like, social media was just starting to, like, kick on, mm. like, you know, where it was, like, a big thing. And we didn't really know how to deal with it. Right. Like, even, like, with social media these days, like, I'm a pretty private person. Like, I don't like people knowing where I'm at, who I am, or what yeah. I'm doing. Like, so I don't really post on social media. I can't just be on my phone talking. It's just not me. But these younger kids killing it doing mm-hmm. that shit yeah, I, I just can't I can't do it I can't yeah. just yeah. be like hey how's it going yeah like it's, it's important too it's uh it's like with my business it's been game changing like social media is where I get all my sales from it's like where am I well I mean this is what me with film I mean yeah. all my music videos come from social media all of them but I just don't know I'm not that guy to be like hey come fucking look what I'm doing and I'm cool look at yeah. this kid yeah. you know I've been trying to post a lot more on there, but I I can never just go on live and have conversations with people. Yeah, yeah. like it is weird because I'm a very antisocial person, like really antisocial. But I don't mind doing. I could do this all day long. Like mm-hmm. I've been on a bunch of podcasts. I could do it all day long and talk, and I don't find it weird at all. Yeah. But I just can't be that person like having an imaginary conversation with yeah. millions of people. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. See, even starting the podcast for me, it was hard as fuck. Cause like to me, I'm kind of like you. I'm kind of antisocial. I'm not that good of a talker. But I kind of did the podcast to force myself yeah. out of my comfort zone to be that. And I I kind of want to get into vlogs and just to try to just to be more more content, you know. Yeah. And it's like forcing myself to get out of that comfort zone. And it might not be for me. I don't know yet. I yeah, have to fucking I mean, try it first. But I, I, I told you guys I did two podcasts on my own. With, with uh, I did one with Strategy, and I did one with another friend of mine, Gina, and I never released them. Mm. I think the problem with it is if I never went back and watched them, yeah, I would have been cool. See, but, that's, but that's since that's I went me. back and watched yes. them, I'm like fuck, I can't put this out. I look stupid, or I, I sound stupid, or whatever. You know, I'm just being insecure about myself. But like with this here. Cool. I've never had to watch this again. Yeah. Awesome. You know, yeah. put it out there to the world. To be yeah. honest, I don't even watch our podcast. Yeah. Well, dude, this is a, this is another question I wanted to ask you. Was um, it was uh, so you would you so you say you have like a little bit of social anxiety? Is that kind of what it is, or is it just more like? I don't think it's that at all. Because like I haven't I deal with anxiety, but I don't yeah. think I have social anxiety. I've yeah. never really dealt with social anxiety. I just don't like fucking people. Okay. Yeah. Just, so so how does that play into like? Did that play a big factor into when you first started filming music videos for strangers and? And uh, so I'll, I'll tell you where I got over my social anxiety. Mm-hmm. For 16 years of my life, I owned an appliance repair company, yeah. <laughs> and I would literally have to go up to strangers' houses and knock on their doors and just wing it. Yeah. And and, and, the, and the the thing about it is, and I'll admit this now, is like there's a lot a lot of times I walk into people's houses, I have a fucking clue what what I was doing or how to fix that. No shit. I didn't have a, not a clue. And you just gotta bullshit your way yeah. through it. I've been there working when I was working for my dad, appraising, yeah. going into strangers' houses and 
like I just felt off being there. I'm like, oh shit. Like when you get in the house, it's like, damn, like I kind of forgot what I was even here yeah. for. Yeah, that's like my, that was my best thing I've ever did with my life as far as like dealing with people. Because yeah. it taught me how to like deal with people. Yeah. And I'm yeah. talking about these people were fucking assholes. Like they would complain and bitch and like, oh man. And you just, you just learn how to, to deal with people, shitty people. There's a lot of shitty people in this world and you learn how to deal with them. Now, did you ever have any self-doubt? Like, when you would show up to a set and you're there to film a video, would you ever, like, question, like, shit, like, I don't even know what I'm doing? Yes. I think that every time that I do it, even now. But yeah. I think that it's just, like, once I get into the groove of things, like, on the way here to do this, you know, I got fucking self-doubt. I'm thinking, like, oh, what the fuck are the questions and what yeah. should I say? But then I realized, because I remember you asked me, like, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, just whatever. I don't want to fucking. Because I don't want to think no, about I it. I don't want to yeah. think yeah. about yeah. it. Because, like, if you go into a situation thinking about it, that's where you know fuck up. Yeah, because you know? yeah. so. then you're like preparing for something, and then I ask you something that you yeah. didn't prepare for, and your brain's like, "Oh shit, how do yeah. we answer this one?" Yeah. yeah, so I think you got to go walk into every situation open with an open plate, where you're just like, even when I go into the film, like I, I have an idea what I'm gonna do almost every time, but I think that I go in there with like, okay, we can do this. You yeah, know? I ask you that because like even me when I go to take photos of people, like when me, you, and uh, your girl went and took photos for the hoodies. When, like, I have a vision in my head of, like, what I want to do, but then when I show up, I'm like, man, like, my self-doubt kicks in. I'm like, man, you don't know shit about composition. You don't know yeah. shit about these settings. You but don't know how to take a good photo. That. Who, who yeah. doesn't do that in life? But know? then when I go look at the photos I took, I'm like, oh, these are dope. But every time I show up, I'm like, shit, I have no idea what I'm doing. You I know? mean, that's, listen, I think that anybody in life who claims that they know what the fuck they're doing they're full of awesome shit they're bullshit. lying yeah. Yeah. they're lying yeah because yeah. I think if you walk into if you're a creative right and you walk into a situation like I know what I'm doing I got this you're already fucking lost yeah. you know because it's like you're too arrogant too cocky to learn yeah I think like I said that like a lot of videos I go on and like I, the artist's idea it's their idea that I'm getting unfortunately I'm getting credit for it sometimes but it's their fucking idea, mm. you know, and and, and I, I'm I'm humble enough to, all right, cool, we can make this happen. I like your idea, or I put them in a place and like oh, I don't see that happening. And sometimes they're right, sometimes I'm right. But I think just being open minded enough to like have that conversation with somebody and, and just be able to just be humble, mm. yeah, you know, is a big deal. It's good to think of things as collabs, even like this podcast. Like I could write down a bunch of questions, but. Our conversations can steer a totally yeah. different yeah. way. If, if you come into this prepared, like right now, questions, you're fucking lost. Yeah. Mm. Well, I feel like it's a good, like, it's like a good, it's good to prepare. Uh, prepare. Sure. Yeah. Because then, like, because the there, there's been times when me and him have done podcasts where we just blank out and we're like, let's cut it off, man. We have nothing to talk about. So it's good to, like, have points, but it usually goes in a way like, like I have questions written down, but I haven't even asked hardly any of them yeah. because we just been flowing in conversation. But, but you, you know, know what? I think like with you two, right? And I'll use this as an example. Like you two know each other. So mm -hmm. like when you guys see each other, it's like you probably don't have much to talk about. It's like being with a chick for 20 years and you're like, I, what the fuck am I going to say? The same, how was your day? You know, yeah. I mean, it, it gets like repetitive. So like you guys are brothers. You guys are around each other all the time. So it's probably the same, the same deal. Well, but actually if, it's not because me and him, that's why we started this podcast because every time we got together was a two hour conversation. Really? We'd just go off and talk. And we're like, man, we need to have a com we need to have a podcast because like I feel like the shit we would talk about could actually help people. Like we would talk about like deeper shit. Like, yeah, because you guys, you both, I know both of you guys, and both of you guys are into the deeper shit. You know, what yeah, I mean? yeah, more than the outside surface bullshit. You know, yeah. like rock on, let's go party. You know, yeah. you know, like you guys put thought in the shit. You know, yeah. and like, but the moment you hit record, it's a different thing. Yeah, though. sometimes, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, like me, me and him, we we used to live there. We used to fucking talk yeah. politics all the fucking time. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? And like, we don't agree on anything. I don't think, but we're not fucking trying to chew each other's heads off either. Yeah. But right, you know, right. so. Let's not talk about politics. <laughs> no, no, no. That's something we refuse. Yeah, that, yeah we, we we tried that one we time. We did one episode where we tried. Oh my like, god, this ain't coming yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> you just sound like because because you could have like one thing you're saying and you just sound like complete asshole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you sound racist, or yeah. you sound sexist, or yeah. whatever. And in, in today's culture, it's like, dude, you gotta. And, and when you're talking about politics, you gotta watch everything you yeah. say almost. Well, like I said earlier, I was like, you know, like if you, if like you gotta. Pull your shit up, you know. You, like if you want to make something happen, shut the fuck up and do it. Mm. I feel like every time I say that, I'm like, man, someone's gonna like turn that against me yeah. <laughs> somehow, some yeah. way. Yeah, I feel like someone's gonna turn that against me, but it, but it's the truth. Yeah, but how I look at that, like when you say that, it's almost like you're talking to yourself. Like you're not really talking to anybody else. Like 
Like they can take what you're saying and and run with it and shut the fuck up and run with it yeah. or or not. But it's really that's how you talk to yourself. Yeah, but I feel like that would even like when I say when I talk about politics with people, like I might not be right. Yeah, yeah. Prove me wrong. Yeah, you know. Right. But just to instantly being like, oh, you're fucking racist is like, whoa, wait a minute, yeah. like chill the fuck, like where the fuck you know, like that's that's what bothers me about today's society is they they instantly. Take a side Yeah they're like Right shit. or left Like yeah. you're, yeah. you're Fucking You're either You know Right or left And there's no in between And like I think that Most people in the world Are dead center With this shit yeah. You know what well, I'm saying they, That's they, a problem With social media too Is like Is like People will post a video And only post a part Of that video And then it goes viral And then it comes out Two weeks later That that wasn't The whole story Oh you, you, you that, that guy jumped out Of the car And fucking had a gun on him And then punched that cop Seven times in the face But then the cop Maced him So the cop's bad yeah, like, it's like shit like yeah. that. Let's like defund just, the police. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it right, it right, doesn't right. make sense, you yeah. know? Uh-huh. Like, do you want to live in a world where it's like chaos and anarchy everywhere? Like, let's be real, you know? So, well, we're the type to, the, they'll read the, the caption and, and, oh, it and drives think me, it's the fu- truth. Drives and me fucking sharing. crazy. Like, I, I think it was the day that, like, they were talking about the, the new, like, um, plasma shit for the coronavirus that, like, is helping patients or whatever. So, like, it says, like, BJC is using this new plasma and it's helping all these patients, right? And then, like, so you open it up and then you read the article and it's like, yeah, it's it, they said it was like one out of forty-five patients is stopping them from going to the hospital. You're like, how the <laughs> fuck does this have like anything to do with the? You know, it's like, god yeah, damn it, bait. everything's clicked. It drives me yeah. crazy. <laughs> it's bad. It drives me fucking crazy. Like every every article you see on on Facebook, you you, you can guarantee you that it's it's somehow skewed. Mm. Yep. Somehow. And it's just like, why can't you just fucking tell us the truth? Right. It drives me crazy. Because it's all about views, bro. That's what I feel like. What's your uh, What's your biggest fear? Oh, shit. Uh, I think I have two. Number one, my teeth falling out. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> Bro, you can afford dentures, can't you? Yeah, well. Um, and number uh, number two, I think just <laughs> that's all. I did not expect that. Not not being successful. Yeah, because yeah. I want to be successful. That's, yeah. Um, well, how do you define success? Mm. That's weird. I don't know. Because some people would be like more money. Um, and I think mo- every like people around me always like you talk about money a lot. Like you feel like money is everything that revolves around your world. And I'm like, yeah. It's not, it's not that I think money's going to bring you happiness, but I think it'll put a fucking good down payment on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, when you don't have to stress out like you and worry about your bills and like. Money's freedom. That's yeah, that's I mean, what I, that's almost how I define success is financial freedom. Like, I don't ever want to have to worry about money. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's where I want to get in that point. When you're younger or even now or whatever, like, if, if, you're, if you're having money problems. Your biggest stress in fucking life is money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It just compounds on every, like. If you got a girl and you got money problems, the problems you have with the girl is just compounded by the fucking money yeah, problems. Yep. It, yeah. It's just like it Fact. just never. It's always money. It's like money is always an issue. Yeah. I grew up without money, Same. and I feel like being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it is fucking everything. Mm. And these last couple of years, I've been saving a little more money, and it's like I don't have to worry. Oh, I'm fucking phone bills due tomorrow. Cool. Yeah. Like it's not like the day before. I'm like fuck. I got to come up with 50 bucks and we're not going to be able to pay this fucking phone bill. Worry about my phone getting shut off, yeah. you know? It's just like, or, you know, like where I live, we get fucking tickets every goddamn day. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, 10 years ago, those $15 tickets would kill me. Yeah. Right, right. You know, well, part of me views you as a success right now because you got out of the matrix. You know, you got out of the nine to five cycle. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I've been self-employed since I was 19 years old. So... It's weird for me to 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 look at it like that because it's kind of all you know. It's all I know. Yeah, because yeah. you never had like f- since nineteen. Then you never were clocking in, clocking out type I, job. I, 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 I'm lying. I would say till I was about twenty three, twenty four is when I stopped completely working for for a company. But I've always had some type of hustle where I was making money on the top of working. Um, but I say like twenty four, twenty five, like I started doing the appliance business. I was still working for somebody, but I was self-employed doing that. Mm. So, and then music, self-employed, yeah. you know, not that I made a ton of money off of it, but I was always doing it. And then film, you know, self-employed doing that. So it's like, I'm not the type of person to have a boss. Yeah. I'm not good at that. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I, I would tell you to 
fuck off real yeah, quick. I hate it. That's why yeah. I became a manager, but you're still got people above you. It's not even. But, but you know what? But I also look at it like this, man. Like, money's money. We've all done shitty things to make money. You know, as long as it's like not against your morals, like you ain't out here drowning babies. You know what I mean? Like, mm. you got to do what you got to do. So subscribe to my OnlyFans. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you my bone. Uh, but you know, I might. Uh, fuck. I mean, in a year from like when coronavirus happened, I was freaking the fuck out. Oh, yeah. Ooh, especially with big. your business. Because Did I didn't know what the fuck I was yeah. gonna do. So like, I thought like my number one go to is like, well, I'm gonna have to go fucking start fixing appliances again. Mm. Is that a scary thought? Fuck yeah. I mean, fuck yeah. Well, how was how was COVID? Like, how was this time for your business? Um, I will say this. In the first two or three weeks of it, I was scared out of my mind. Um, and then I made more money than I've ever made in my fucking life. No shit. No shit. Do you think it's because other creators weren't out there doing it? Or? <clears throat> There's multiple reasons why. Um, I was able to get PPP loan. Hmm. Because my business was failing, which in the first couple of weeks it was. Um, another situation to a company that I own, we were doing, uh, we do events. You know, I'm a part owner of that company. And we do different events, and, and, and we lost every event we had booked for 2020. And we were freaking the fuck out. And then we were able to take that and pivot, and we started doing the events live on online, like on Zoom and shit. And we basically... We're doing good. Mm. Really fucking good. So that happened. And then music videos, like, I don't know what it is about rappers, but COVID is not fucking real. Yeah. <laughs> so they just been out here nonstop wanting to do music videos, you know? So uh, I've, I've been working, I've been putting more hours in than I've ever put in in my life, too. So I think it's forcing everyone to be a little bit more creative. Like, you had to go yeah. to Zoom yeah. or else yeah. that and business would have failed. And at the end of the day, like, I feel bad that. There's people out here that don't have no fucking work. Sucks. Yeah. Like, I, sucks. But I, I think this is the time to realize that you should have had something else on your plate. Figure yeah. it out. Yeah, that's why I started an online personal training because I realized, <laughs> like, if you have a physical job you can go to, that can get shut down any any time now. Yeah. Any time. And, 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 and I mean, fucking, they, they just opened up L.A. like last yeah. week. Yeah, yeah, that's it's fucking, fucking crazy. crazy. That is it's fucking nuts. I feel so bad for the businesses. I mean, everybody I know that lives out there left. Yeah. Yep. Everybody. So it's like, I don't know. Like, it, it, like I feel bad because I know there's people out here that aren't fucking working. So, like, when I say, hey, I make more money than I've ever made in my life, you know, like, that's me being humble about it, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, 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 I really do feel bad that people are out here fucking struggling, you know, because they are. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how to help that, you know what I mean? Like, Besides, say that this is take this opportunity and reflect on it and realize that you know, put put more eggs in your basket. Yeah, 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 diversifying for sure. Because I got fucking lucky throughout all this, you know. And I mean, I think that I just had a bunch of eggs in a bunch of baskets, and it fucking it paid off. And I worked hard to get it there. But I think that people just gotta you you can't you cannot rely on somebody else to feed you or your family. Yep. Period. Yep. You can have that fucking four hundred thousand dollar year cush job sitting behind a desk somewhere and go none, away none, just like none of that, that shit fucking matters, man. Just like that. Take that money and invest it. Figure it out. Like I got friends that made a killing on Bitcoin. Mm. You know? I'm just now starting to get into that, you know, like figure it out. I mean, the thing about it is like you can have a side hustle that isn't really co- like it doesn't cost money to to put a side hustle together. Yeah. But it takes your time. So if you'd rather go home after work and fucking drink and watch TV, that's your priority. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? So, and I think people are realizing it. Yeah. Um, see, this is where the questions can kind of come into play. Oh, shit. Oh, Got a juicy question in there for Yeah, well. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't. <laughs> I, I, Let's not go too juicy now. <laughs> <laughs> No, I got so like. Uh, what would you say is one of your biggest failures, and what did you learn from it? Jesus, I don't like this question. <laughs> I mean, or biggest lesson. So I, I, I got a big lesson, not a failure. Yeah, because le- well, that's how I, I think about it anyway. Is uh, you, you either take a win or a lesson. There's no losses. But so yeah, what's your biggest lesson that you've learned? My health. 
mm. without a, without a doubt mm. because I think that that when I was in my 20s and I was drinking and partying and you know kicking it and not sleeping and doing whatever you know my health when my when I got sick that was a fucking like how how this coronavirus is a rude awakening to a lot of people that was mm. I learned I learned my coronavirus when I was 27 you know yeah. what I mean I got hit with a ton of bricks and it taught me to like be prepared, you know, because anything can fucking happen, and, and, and nothing, and, and nothing matters unless you have your health. Nothing, yeah. not not your your family. Nothing fucking matters. Oh, yeah. If you me, don't I have know. your health, you yeah. know, you know. Yeah. I know you know. If you don't have your health, shit. it doesn't fucking matter. Like that's the only thing that you should care about in your life is your health. And if you neglect that now, being healthy, you're, you're gonna pay for it. You're going yeah. to pay for it. Yeah. I got a real close friend of mine is really dealing with it right now. Mm. You know and. You know, health, health is everything. And that was my lesson. You got to take what, care of yourself. What would you have done differently? Like Definitely take care of myself. Yeah, just not partying and drinking so much. Yeah, not drinking, eating right, just exercising. just Checking your basement for mold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, checking my mental, my psyche, yeah. my, you know, depression and anxiety. I'm very open about depression and anxiety, and it's just fucking real. Mm. And I used to not believe in it, and it's real. Yeah. So... I would say even to this day, I still deal with, I, I, I deal with anxiety for sure. And I deal with depression. So it's like, it's one of those things that, you know, you got to check your mental state before you just, you know, that was my lesson. Yeah. Biggest lesson. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that a hundred percent. That's important. Yeah. So it's one of those things that if you don't, if you don't put all your cards in the right place, man, you're going to fuck yourself. All right, let's. Uh, I want to get back into the music thing because I'm just interested. Oh in, shit! In some, um, <laughs> in some big artists that you've worked with. Uh, like what? What's some of your favorite artists that you worked with? Like in what realm of working with hip hop? Like, like, uh, like, like music videos type like shit. Music videos. I've done a lot of cool shit. Um, did some shit with Crazy Bone. And that was at the apartment. Yeah, I shot it at the apartment. That was fucking that was dope. Um. I did some shit for a lot. I've done a lot of like live, live footed shit with a bunch of different artists. Um, fuck, I don't know. I had a, uh, uh, God damn it, what's his name? I forgot his name. Uh, dude from uh, Shady Records. Ah, oh, fuck, I can't think of his name. Uh, Crooked Eye. Crooked Eye. Yeah, I had him. He came and recorded my house. Oh, you guys shot, did that cipher. Yeah, and shot him. That was at video. your house. Yeah, he recorded this shit at my house. Yeah. That was that was fucking trippy. <laughs> that was really trippy. How did, that, how did that play out, or how did that come about? Man, I forgot who set that up. Um, I think the dude from Step or Get Left. You don't remember what I'm talking about? Uh uh-uh. uh. Dean used to be part of that. Yeah, they used to do a bunch of ciphers. Yeah, I but think I forgot the guy's name. Jack Boy was in one of them. Ran the the label or whatever. I forgot his fucking name, but I think he set it all up. Didn't mm-hmm. Crooked Eye come in with nothing written down? Yeah, and just like no, nothing. Freestyled, just freestyled, the, freestyled shit. the whole thing. Like it was pretty. It was a trip. Dude, that had been insane to be a part of that cipher. Like was Stogie? He was a part of it yeah, too, Stogie, right? I think Stogie, Stogie was in Bodine. there. Was Stogie in there? I think he was. I man, think he mentioned that it. Is crazy. He mentioned it to me. Oh yeah, maybe he was. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe yeah. not. <laughs> maybe I don't I'm know. Just maybe just making shit up. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> I give, give credit they don't get credit for. <laughs> hey, I think Eminem was there. Yeah, bro. yeah. yeah. <laughs> like fuck, yeah. shit. I was in it too. <laughs> yeah, I was. Right in, uh, yeah, I think I was there too. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, fucking. I don't know. And I've worked with. <sighs> so what put me on to your music videos was actually Murphy Lee. You guys shot. I think it was inside J.E.'s house. Yeah. And it was yeah, like a yeah. big-ass party. <sighs> she was nuts. And that's what made me and him go to you for the first time. Yeah, we shot that at 3 o'clock in the morning in J.E.'s house. Yeah. And how everything was like... Wasn't everything like slowed? Like everyone ha- was frozen in it? Oh, yeah, we did it. We did it like a scene. Like, that was like that big thing. What was it like the song that was happening at the time where like everybody was like... Mannequin, oh, the, the, the Mannequin, Mannequin Challenge or whatever. Mannequin yeah, Challenge, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like yeah. we did that, yeah. It was cool, man. Like, Yeah, but that was my first video that I've seen of yours. I'm like... Oh shit! Yeah, like, I mean, you, there was there's been some, some cool, cool experience. We did some cool shit with some bands too. Uh, Pod. Yeah. Band oh band yeah, yeah. yeah. We did like four yeah. videos for them. They're fucking yeah. cool. That's you know? pretty big, dude. Yeah, that's I big. That's big. I grew up listening yeah. to that. Me you too. Know? Like, Me that's, too. That's Me big. Too. That's really big. You know, that was yeah. a trip. So, Youth of the Nation. Yeah. yeah, that was that was trippy. Do you have any crazy stories from from going out to like L. A. or or like with anything within the music industry? Yeah, but I don't want to like put people out there like that. You know, I mean, nothing too crazy though. But like, just say, it, bro, we'll cut it. Nah, <laughs> come on, did Riff Raff give you code? <laughs> no, put away on blast. I mean, but it, a lot of the trips to like out of town have been haven't been for music videos. They've been for corporate shit. No shit. How many times did you work with uh, Tyron Woodley? 
Um, just the one time on the one video. Mm. I did another project with them too. I got to go. I went with them to go to Wiz Khalifa to the Wiz Khalifa yeah. show and shit. Went and kicked it with Wiz and you met Wiz. Shit. Yeah, he was cool, man. Cool, cool, cool dude. Smoke weed with him? No. You probably just got he high was, just chilling he, in the yeah, back room. Yeah, he was room. fucking smoking <laughs> enough for all of us. You didn't get to shoot photos or nothing. Or did no, you I was not filming. I filmed oh, it. Yeah, I filmed it and shit. So <clears throat> I kind of kept. Um, I kept him out of it, a lot mm-hmm. of it, because unless he was kind of with Tyron, because it was just like, I didn't want to stick the camera to dude's face. He's just right. chilling yeah. in his fucking green room. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> didn't want to be that guy, you know what I mean? But talk to him. He was cool and shit, you know? And so that motherfucker is huge. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a tall, tall fuck, motherfucker. Huh? He's like tall, but he like, he's ripped too. Like, that motherfucker is big. Yeah, like, wow. I'm these, like, what the fuck? Days, oh, yeah, yeah, he's doing Muay Thai and like. He was fucking killing it. Big ass dude. I'm like, what the fuck? What the dude? Because I, I remember back in the day, I met him like when he first popped off and he was like, fucking, I'm skinny, but yeah. shit, he was way skinnier than me and he was tall as fuck. Oh, yeah, I remember but, I took him out yeah. for your birthday in 20, <laughs> 2010 when we went yeah, to yeah, go yeah. see him. Yeah. That's a, shit, man. And that's when, uh, that was before Cushion Orange Shoes, I yeah, think. His tickets were $5. Oh, yeah. really? Where was yeah. that at? I have, it, I have one of his tickets. It was a Columbia. I oh, think wow. it was the Blue Note. It, and it was out. sold out too, and we had a scalp ticket, so we got it for like ten bucks because yeah. somebody sold it to really? us. Really, that's yeah. double crazy. the price. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. But it's yeah. crazy because the next year he was doing fucking big. stadiums. Yeah, yeah. big, big. Yeah, shit. he blew all the, the black way up. and yellow. When that popped off, it was just like game over for him. Yeah, it was around that time I met him. I don't remember where, but it was a long ass time ago. See, that's the cool thing about your job in particular. It kind of brings you around all these different characters, you yeah. know, and these bigger names. Um. And networking, like, yeah. it, it, do you ever feel intimidated by these people because of their status? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, it's weird though. It's like sometimes you meet people that are famous and like they're 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 cool as fuck. They're just normal people, you know. But sometimes they're just like assholes, and you're like, yeah. what the fuck did that come from? But most people, man, they're just normal people. Yeah, they're just normal. And it's funny because you get more local people that are acting more oh bigger God. than they are, the have fucking, security with yeah. them. I think, I think the, the, <laughs> the biggest downfall of, like, people in life is their fucking ego, man. Oh, like, big time. Jesus big time. Christ, like, chill the fuck yeah. out. Like I, like, I have an ego, but, like, whenever I have an ego with people, like, I'm goofing. Like, I'm playing around. Right. Like, I'm trying to be funny, you know right, what I mean? Right. But, like, not, like, I'm not serious. Right, like, I'm right. not that serious about myself, you know? Yeah. Some people are just, like, fucking so serious. Yeah. Yeah, cause I know with me and music when I was doing it five years ago like I was kind of like not comfortable doing it really? like I, I just felt like I felt like I was in my ego where I wasn't being a hundred percent myself yeah because I think like especially with rap music you kind of gotta like be more than what you are yeah, yeah like I felt like I never was hard enough you yeah. know like, I, didn't, like, I don't what, need to be hard that's not yeah, like yeah. that's not me but I felt like I needed I think Some of that. They call it like imposter syndrome. Yeah. You know? Like where like, you don't feel like you're actually what you're being. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, you don't and, feel like you're playing the right part. Yeah. And I would have like friends that would rap and that would tell me and Joe were too humble to be rappers. You yeah. Know? Well, I mean, it was like with FTI. Like I always felt like that. Like we were, we were boasting in a way that like we looked larger than life because like we were just fucking like four normal fucking dudes that mm-hmm. just like to party and get drunk and go hang out yeah. in fucking Main Street. Like we didn't, we weren't really like, superstars you know what i mean yeah. and when people treated us like that it was fucking weird because like that wasn't us but like from the outside in it looked like we were larger than life but yeah we, but you didn't feel we like were it. fucking we, you could treat us like superstars but the next day we still got up and went to fucking work for a job yeah. we fucking hated you yeah. know what i mean so it was like it was it was a weird feeling yeah it's weird oh it, it but it's it's cool though <laughs> too to run into people wearing your shit oh yeah and like i remember yeah. fti like i'd be at uh at work and some random people I never seen before would have F- FTI Dude, on. I've them. literally like went to LA and like and people had FTI and, like, like FTI on. I'm like, no what way. the no fuck? Shit. Oh yeah, dude, no I've shit. been I've been places like out of the state like where people are wearing it. I'm like, see, that's, that's, that's a crazy fucker. feeling. And I, that's I, a crazy I just like. Feeling. I know, like, the people wearing are like, what the who the fuck is this dude? I'm just staring go, at him. Do you like, go up to him? Oh fuck, like, <laughs> man, I think I have, but there's been situations yeah. where I've seen them like. 
And it's like, it's the weirdest fucking day. Yeah. One and time it, I was at Walmart and I seen some random dude wearing a PSA shirt. I'd never seen this dude in my life. And I was like, wait, is that my, is that VSA? Like, I was like, did Like second guessing. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I was like, and then I had to go up to him. I was like, hey man, where'd you get that shirt? You know? Yeah, well, yeah. And another thing is like weird with me, like, cause I, since I, like with FTI, I was always behind the scenes. So I was never like the face of it. So like people yeah. didn't really like associate me with it as much as like some of the other guys. So I was never like walking into place, but oh, you're the dude from, you know, I was never yeah. that, you know? Um, but like with the with my film legends thing, like random ass people will walk up to me, have no fucking idea who they are, and be like, yeah, I'm a fan, like some grown ass man and shit. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, this is weird. weird. Like, yeah, you, know, yeah. you don't know how to take that compliment. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's if it happened every day, you'd be able to take it, but it's like so random, and it happens like once every two years <laughs> yeah. that it like is weird. So, but that's confirmation too. Like. All yeah, right, yeah. I need to keep going. Yeah, you, know? I mean, you, for you sure. get you're getting people inspired by you for sure. Like, for sure, we were inspired by FTI. Like I liked how you guys moved. You guys created one thing I liked about you guys is you guys had like a cohesive like look to you guys. Yeah, you know, we you all dress the same. Yeah, we all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but yeah. I was like, I always admired that because yeah. like me and Joe have a certain style. I feel like, and it was it was hard to get somebody to like play guitar for us on stage that didn't have that style like yeah. i would almost like yo you gotta change you like yo, wear we, this well, you wear know, that. that was like that was like a real thing with us like we made sure like if we went on stage we all had the same colors mm. we were dressed exactly yeah. the same like even when we went out we tried to like you know do that but like it was a posse yeah, i mean there was guys who literally didn't dress like they were around us that didn't dress like that but only dressed like that no shit. To be around it when they came out. You so know? you guys made that like a thing. Like yeah. If you guys. That was a yeah, very, very intentional. You know? I yeah. think that's important. That is though. important. Yeah. Because you're branding like, yourself. Yeah. It's like Yellow Wolf, like how his whole clique is all boots, yeah. everything, you know? Yeah. yeah. Cohesive. And I feel like before Yellow Wolf popped off, he was kind of wearing whatever and then mm. nothing really clicked for him until he well, well, yeah, kind of got into his. That's why I think his... it's weird about it. Like you'll see rappers nowadays that like, they'll get on stage like especially like local guys who look get on stage and like one dude's like in skinny jeans and fucking a tank top and another dude's like in wearing fucking, a batman t-shirt yeah, yeah, he's or some like shit. what the fuck like yeah you gotta no that don't work yeah. man like yeah. you've got to it's 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 a it's an art form in a way that you have to be co cohesive you yeah, know yeah. you have to like and when you go out in public you gotta be that guy yeah yeah yellow have said that too he, he's like you you have to you got to be ready at all times. Like, anybody could take your photo. Like, if you go to the gas station wearing some fucking whack-ass pajamas. Put you or, on blast. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you got to be on point That's why with I just wear shit. Walmart clothes all day long. I can just stunt all day <laughs> yeah. in Walmart clothes. You're actually wearing blue, dude. I yeah, know. I got usually, some blue jeans on. You got some new Not blue all black. jeans. What's going yeah, on? I know, man. Uh, Changing it up a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and put all black on now. That <laughs> That's what I used to do, man. I used to only wear all black, and then I and then I got like these blue jeans or something. And then I was like, all right, I'm gonna yeah. start switching it up a little same bit. Same with me. Like, I literally wore the same. But it's like with you guys. It's like I was thinking about this the other day. Like I, there was this fucking. I was on Instagram. There's this dope ass fucking bracelet on Instagram. I was like, man, that thing's fucking hard. I'm like, I couldn't fucking wear that. I immediately thought about you two. Do you all fucking wear bracelets and shit? And oh, like, yeah. you guys can get away with it. But I'm yeah. like, I couldn't. You could do, do it, that. dude. Ah, you got man, it's all about watch on right yeah, now. Yeah, but it was like, it was. Just, I don't know. It was yeah. You fucking, could though. Yeah, but it was just, like. But that's the thing, bro. Like, whenever I first got like a ring, I thought it was weird. Like, I was like, I, I had to like get used to wearing. Yeah, a ring. now you motherfuckers all wear rings and yeah. shit. Oh like, yeah, yeah. It's normal now. It's just now, something you gotta but... get used to. Like, so, I was going to wear overalls today, but I was just like, yeah. I, I'm still not comfortable in the oh, overalls, yeah, yeah. so I'm like, you got to call Sean up. He'll yeah. Show, you how to show him his Show ways. me how to, how to do it, yeah. But yeah, it's like so weird to me. Like, I can't just like, I've literally dressed the same way I've dressed. Forever. Forever, you know yeah. what I mean? I used to wear bigger, baggier clothes, but like, besides that, like, I haven't changed my style of dressing since I was like, since yeah. I started dressing myself. <laughs> yeah. So it was weird. Yeah. Yeah. Our style has been the same, but it just added rings yeah. over the years you know and that's the thing though it's just at first wearing rings i was like this does not be yeah Dude, like, even the more wearing, you, even wearing nikes bro i used yeah. to think the same way about nikes I, I used to identify with vans and converse and i was like if i wear nike or anything else and that's not gonna feel right you know yeah and then i got a pair and then i was like oh this is actually pretty dope well you, you know, know where because I, I was working on this tv show dude and i was wearing chucks and we're standing on concrete holding 40 pound cameras and i learned really fucking quick Fuck chucks when yeah. you got to stand around all day. And oh, I went yeah. out and I bought me a pair of Nike running, like the uh, you know, like the little yeah, 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 yeah. stupid ass Nike running shoes. 
I didn't give a fuck. Game changing. I was like, man, I'm comfortable now. Like, my yeah. feet don't fucking hurt. So, yeah. that's where I learned, like, I'll, I don't give a shit. I'll wear them, you know. But, yeah. I, but I don't wear them unless I'm fucking working. But if I'm yeah. out, like, looking cool, I'll wear chucks. Some kind of, yeah. So, hell yeah. Cool, cool. Where are we at time-wise? A million Can minutes You got any more questions? Anything that we didn't talk about that you want to throw out there? Uh, I'm trying. I got a new uh, GoFundMe. I'm trying to make a million dollars. Hey, there Donate you go. It. <laughs> don't away. Don't away. <laughs> What's it called? What's your? Uh, uh, how do we find uh, it? Fuck, I don't even know. I'll <laughs> send you the link. <laughs> I gotta make one. Bro. <laughs> He's like, oh shit. You got any uh, projects you're working on? Anything big coming up? Man, um, it's a lot of corporate shit. I don't have. I think I have like two music videos booked right now. This is all corporate shit. This has been so busy with corporate stuff. So, um, yeah. Where can they? Uh, where can the people find you on social media? The Film Legends. Film Legends. On everything. Oh YouTube. yeah. YouTube. You are you on YouTube? I'm on YouTube, but I don't really. I don't really fuck with it. It would be cool though. I, I I'm a big advocate on vlogs though. Not you being in front of the camera, but Somebody I would like to see behind the yeah. scenes on you setting up the set. Well, and I, and you I, doing and I, There's this, a couple that. of them out there that I have done. Have you seen them? No. no. There's like two or three of them out there, but I gotta pay someone to come out and do it. Well, dude, actually, like you're <coughs> you know how to operate a camera. Like set it up, set <laughs> yeah, it up but, yourself, and film yourself. But doing like shit. I had Boomin come out and do one for me, and it, it's fucking dope. I'll show it to you guys after it's over, but. It's fucking dope. Like, it's, it's cool as shit. Yeah, because yeah. there's people yeah. like me that loves to see that shit. I tell him all the time. Like, I want to see be- behind the scenes on, on the BSA shit, you know? Like, yeah. I'm a behind Actually, the I scenes a, guy. I got, a video, I, like I got a video that's on my computer right now. I just dyed all these hoodies. And uh, I filmed it all myself. But it's definitely, if you can have somebody film for you, it's way easier. Yeah, because usually, like, dude, I'm already it, it, taking it literally so made that process. It made that process three times longer. Because exactly. I had to go stop the camera. Exactly. Go re-dye something go f- pick up the camera film it like it was and then it you gotta go edit the shit yeah, yeah. Dude, it's taking me <laughs> for nice time too yeah it's taking me forever well that's that's where i'm trying to like i'm trying to get to a level where i can charge more so i can hire people yeah. put money in other people's pockets to come out and do shit like that yeah that's a real thing so oh yeah i like it man cool cool I'm trying i'm trying i'm trying well, uh, it's, I know you got a reel out, a new reel. Send it to me, and I'll, I'll put it at the end of the video. Yeah, cool. Yeah, got cool. a couple of them. And we'll put all your links and everything in the description and everything. And Yeah, check them out. If you want a music video or whatever, hit this up our boy. Guy. You yeah. want to come film you fuck your girlfriend? Yeah, I he does porns extra. now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that could be some lucrative business. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> dude, you got the quality camera, dude. You can dude, get the details. But, but if you're a girl and you want... <laughs> Me to come film you fuck your girlfriend? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Get it. Cool. Cut that out. Hell yeah. Nah, it's staying in. All right. <laughs> All right. The Film Legends uh, podcast. Yeah. Follow us on yes, HNBJ podcast on Instagram. Subscribe. Like Let's go, subscribe. baby. I hope we didn't get too weird. <laughs> we nah. might got a little weird, but. Yeah, bro. When you said that. <laughs> All right. Thank All right, you. Cool. Bye. <laughs>
Save 